You're listening to the Finding Careers In podcast. I'm Pete Newsom, and I'm joined once again by HR consultant extraordinaire, Ricky Baez. Ricky, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Just wanted to let you know the T-shirt that says HR consultant extraordinaire is in the mail still. With all the supply chain issues, it's not here as promised, but I'll let you know when it gets here. Do, do I get one too? It's, well, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Yours is I thought I'd get one with you with your face on it. <laughs> Boy, you really want to scare people away. That's yeah. what you want to do, Pete. Right. I, I, I'm not going to work for the podcast. <laughs> I want to promote promote you and HR at, at all costs. Only um, person Halloween. Got it. <laughs> so we're, 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 we're talking HR this morning. That's why I asked you um, particularly uh, to join me this morning to talk about some bad advice that, that I see out there on LinkedIn. I've mm -hmm. recently, recently started using TikTok, which is crazy. That's a whole different story. <laughs> um, and it is, it's out there and it's prevalent and it gets all of the positive attention. So okay. it's almost like the the more extreme uh, advice you can give for employees who, um, uh, and and I and I summarize this as is taking the easy path. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's like the easier the path, the more likes and shares it gets, and anything yeah. that's sort of anti-employer um, is is what's popular. And I think that's a really dangerous thing to buy into. Um, so I wanted to talk about some of these things in particular that, that I've seen and get your take on it and to see if, if I'd like to see it from a different perspective. So, you know, it would, uh, with Zengeg, our website and finding careers and podcasts, we are the employees advocate. That's what we exist to, uh, to be. That's a role that, that we um, are here to serve, but often that means sharing information that's necessary, but not popular. Right. So what Got you it. need to hear, not what you want to hear. So I want to get into some of these things this morning and see if we can find a different perspective than I currently have um, as these just lead to a bad result. Right. Got so it. have you seen, have you okay. seen the, the stuff too? I, I know I, uh, we, you knew what I wanted to talk about, but I, we didn't talk specifics yet. So have you, have you seen what I, I what I've, I've I'm noticing a trend in uh, in LinkedIn and social media where, yes, that advice is being given. And I'm like, ah, oh, man, I don't know about that. I just do not know about that. And I really think it's a result of how popular social media has gotten in the past 20 years. And I don't think people wanting to give out relevant information is top of mind. I think more is to be liked to be popular, to be shared, to go viral is, is, is the key thing. And I think because of that, we're getting a lot of bad information that people are following out there. So yeah, I have seen it. I want to see what specific ones you're talking about. I want to see if it's the same that I have on my list. So look, I'm going to be a little bit vague. I don't, I don't want okay. to try to call anyone out in particular. So I'll, okay. I'll just describe these things more from a high level than, than try to read a specific quote. So okay, I'll just start with an easy one. Um, you don't need to give two weeks notice if, if you're quitting your job, right? That that's the that's the line, and the re, the justification is the employers don't care about you, right? They they you know the, the yeah you know, this the name it's always this sort of like this uh, approach or description of like the nameless faceless you know giant corporation, as if there aren't actual people involved, <laughs> and I let it and and so. Yeah, you know, the real kind of explanation was, hey, when they when they lay you off, it, you know, it's not they're not going to lose sleep over it. They won't, you know, they won't bother them at all. And that is so far from true yeah. that um, as as someone who's been part of deciding uh, at a corporate level who you know making a list of ranking employees mm -hmm. and and not knowing how many were were going to be um, laid off, I had to do that in my twenties, and it was excruciating. Um, because you are playing with people's lives and, yep. um, it's an, it was an awful feeling. And then mm -hmm. I've had to deal with it many times as a staffing, uh, company owner over the last 18 years where I get a phone call, uh, sometimes like in 2008, those phone calls were coming constantly, uh, mm -hmm. it, where I was afraid to answer my phone because I knew it was going to be bad news. Yep. There was zero chance that a good call was coming from a client. And the people on the other end of the line, with that exception, were always uh, just distraught over it. Yeah. And yeah, 
there, sometimes there's there's tears involved. And I'm talking about the people who are having to make these decisions yeah. um, through no fault of anyone's just just situation in that case, right? Well, there was a fault of 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 of, of the banking system, but that's a different story that's altogether. Different, yeah. yeah. And the you know the decisions had to be be made, and then again in COVID, um, you know, uh, where I've been part of you know, those conversations. You know, one of our clients had to lay off about thirty people at once, and mm-hmm. they asked uh, me to to be on that call. And it, it's 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 heartbreaking to do. Um, and so I can say definitively, as I'm sure you can, that there are real people behind these decisions. They are affected by it. So that's a little off topic on, on why giving, you know, two weeks notice <laughs> should be done, but it's that is the reason was like, what are we talking about here? <laughs> like that is not reality or anything close to it. It's not Pete. And, and, and it's funny you're bringing this up because one of my students asked me this a couple of weeks ago, one of my students asked me, um, is it's given a two week notice, uh, the law. And I'm like, it's not, there's nothing in the law that says an employee has to give a two week notice. It's always been a best practice. And the reason I love two week notices is because, you know, it gives the employer an opportunity to find a replacement, right? It, it's, it's, it's just common courtesy, but to go out there and say that you should not give a two week notice because it, when it's time to lay somebody off, the company's not going to sleep over it. I'll say this, these gray hairs did not just show up on their own guys. <laughs> that not you're you're looking at somebody you're hearing somebody who has orchestrated thousands of layoffs and has been involved himself myself um I laid off about four times in, in my career so i've seen both sides of it and i gotta tell you when executive leadership says guys we're in trouble we have to shave off 10 percent of payroll or just save we don't just say oh it's just fire people and that's it it is a long process of figuring out how can we save money without affecting people's lives? That is the first thing that comes to top to mind. And the first thing that we do in HR is we cut out open positions that are not filled, right? Positions we're budgeted for that are not filled. We want to make sure that the efficiencies are put in place to where it affects the employees the least. And then when, when you get that phone call that says, hey, just want to let you know you're being laid off, that means Every single other avenue has been exhausted because we try extremely hard to make sure we don't impact people's lives. But unfortunately, sometimes we do. Well, and, and it's necessary for a business to survive at at times. Mm -hmm. It's necessary. You you have to make decisions just like any group organization society would, um, you know, what is going to keep the ship afloat? What Mm -hmm. is going to benefit (laughs) The many, um, if if you have to, and this is a harsh way to say it, but sacrifice a few, the few. Um, there's nothing good about it on either side, right? That's I think the 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 point, and we can move on from this. It's not really a conversation about layoffs, but um, the uh, the 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 thought that you shouldn't give two weeks notice is just recommending that someone um, shows a lack of courtesy. That's how I look at it. You know, professional courtesy, uh, you know, I'd say personal, if if you like the people uh, who you work with, because like you said, there, there's a hole that's going to be created mm-hmm. and um, the, the company, you know, it, two weeks is really hard to, to even have, have someone in the seat, right? It creates a burden be <laughs> on your coworkers. It creates a burden on your manager. It, it could, depending on the role, create a burden on the organization as a whole, right? I mean, l- look at you know, some of the people who, I don't know what's true and what's not right now on Twitter um, about Twitter, but uh, yeah, did, did half the engineers just you know not uh, hit the hit the yes button yesterday and they're no longer employees and and Twitter's going to stop working at any minute? Just who wow. knows? Right? We'll see. But um, we know that that even even one person leaving creates um, a, a challenge for those around them. And so now you could say, well, I don't like my coworkers and I want to uh, see them suffer. And okay, fine. But there's still your professional reputation to protect. And that to me is is the message here. And I, I wish I had said that earlier because if there are um you know, you know professionals listening who who don't agree with this and, and say, hey, I'm always gonna do what's best for myself. And 
and that's you know, where the story ends and begins, fine. This is doing what's best for you. Yep. It's just not what you see and feel in the moment. But if you look back on, if you look at life as a whole, right, it, it, the the quick, easy, satisfactory, you know, satisfying answer is usually not, or choice is usually not the right one. And yep. you can go down the line, right? <laughs> we can start with Adam and Eve if we want to, and go down the line. And and you, you don't know, have to go that far back. <laughs> you know, do I have this drink at night? Do I eat a, you know, the, uh, do I want another cookie, another slice? Of Looking pizza? at Apple, <laughs> you, you, right? You go into all of that, and that is not the right choice normally. And yeah. it's 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 just the way it is. So you want to protect your professional reputation. You want to be in a situation where down the road, whether it's months or years or even decades, that people will remember you fondly and they will remember how you exited because that that is their parting thought will be the lasting thought that they have. Mm -hmm. So you could have been great uh, for, for years. And if you leave on an awful note, that will follow you in the minds of everyone who witnessed that. And it's, it's just, it's just, a bad idea I mean, for that it's, reason it's, alone it is a bad idea it's a horrible idea because exactly how you said pete especially with social media the way it is today um it it's it, your your reputation is more important than ever now because your people especially if you document it have you seen these folks that document their exit like at Walmart, they hop on the all call on the intercom and they start saying, you know, cussing out, you know, a, a lot of people on the all call. And then they hang up and they document it. It's a really bad way to leave an mm. organ, regardless of what they did. Right. So it's always a good idea to be the bigger person. Focus. It, just remember, at the end of your day, you are preserved. You're preserving your your name. You're preserving your reputation and always give a two week notice, regardless what the organization did to you. It's always going to work out good for you in the in the long run. Suck it up, bite the bullet and do that's it. Right. Right. That's so, right. yes, sir. I, I think that's probably a segue into something that we and everyone else on the planet have, have talked about um, ad nauseum over the past uh, couple of months, which is quiet quitting. Mm. So now here we are. Yeah, you know, where again the advice is is so commonplace that yeah, do it. Yeah, you know, why don't don't give your employer um, anything they they're not exactly paying for and this and that. Okay, sure, fine. <laughs> We've already <laughs> talked about that on a podcast. That if you're in a situation that you've um, disliked so much, where you feel that you know uh, anything that's not explicitly written on your job description is something you shouldn't do just because, right? Whatever justification you have. That's just an unhealthy environment and you should exit it as soon as possible, right? You would do that in a personal relationship. Um, you would do that in all other aspects of your life. Wait, so by give all it two means, notice with, with work. Give huh? a two week notice. Yeah. <laughs> if if you're in that situation, two week notice and give a two week notice. Right. Go. Like <laughs> yeah, run. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and listen, yeah. that that yeah. is not a bad thing to do. Like yeah. because if you've identified that, like if you feel that way, just know that everyone else knows you feel that way, whether yep. you think they do or not. So if there's going to be a layoff, guess who's first, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that will put you at the top of the list, a bad attitude, you know, being you know, just behaving that way will. So take your destiny and your fate into your own hands. I mean, that's really the, the point with this is don't stay anywhere to, to be the, um, you know, the, the least common denominator. Right. Yeah. Go somewhere where you are motivated to thrive and, and do your best and keep searching until you find that thing. And That's it right. doesn't matter. Um, there, there's not it's not a one size fits all answer. It's what you know, gets you excited, what gets you motivated, what has you taking pride in 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 yourself and how you spend your professional day. That's what matters. And if you yeah. don't feel that you should look to to make a change as soon as possible. And I know people are the listening right now. I'm like, but Pete, there there's so many organizations who just don't value employees. That that's true. Those organizations are out there. But you as a candidate, you as an employee, you as your own entity should never let another employer, another entity dictate how you portray yourself out there. Because look, 
if you have that that horrible of an experience at work, it's a good idea to try to have a conversation with leadership. Sometimes they're going to be receptive. Sometimes they're not. If they are, work it out because maybe they don't know you feel this way. It really depends on the dynamics happening at work. But if they do know you feel this way and they don't really care, you still need to preserve your 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 name and your image and your reputation. Give that two week notice and just hightail it out of there um, because you should really not put um, you should really not tarnish your own reputation just because of your experience with a few employers. There's a lot of really good ones out there that you have to show your best foot forward, kind of like dating. You want to put on a good first impression. Right. And if it doesn't work out, look, because I've seen those TikToks too, Pete, where people are videotaping themselves on a first date and the person goes to the bathroom, they don't come back. Come back from the bathroom. Have a conversation with the person and say, this isn't working out, and yeah. then leave amicably. <laughs> so, can, I don't know if can, anybody noticed that. Can we just be decent? Like, yes. Is that, like, that's What's really wrong the with ask that? here. <laughs> right? It, um, it's, well, just be decent, yeah. Yeah, so, the so I okay, so if... <laughs> Three off a cliff, sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, if you if it's a bad situation, leave as soon as you, as you yeah. can, because just, you, you, you the, the relationship analogy comes up so often in these conversations, because... If you were in a relationship with another person, if you if you are, and you say, I'm going to do the least that I can do, how do you think that other person's going to perceive you? It's not going, it's not, it's not gonna the be the other person's working on the exit. <laughs> That's right. They're 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 putting in, they're working on their two weeks' notice. Right? Yeah, but on Tinder. Yeah, yeah. So so make a change, give notice, leave the right way. Yep. Over time you'll be you'll be glad you did. That that's that right. and and listen, that that's why it is the hard road because it may uh, in the moment, it's not what you want to do, but, but it's what you need to do because it's, it's the right thing to do. Not for the other part. Yes. For the other party, but also for yourself if, if for no other reason. Right. So um, don't stay in a bad situation. Give notice when you leave. Here's another one. Okay. I, I can't even, I, I'm, I'm struggling to even wrap my brain around this one, but, <laughs> okay. but here, here's the message that, um, that, it was essentially saying that employ uh, candidates don't need to who are interviewing don't need to write a thank you note to to managers if and a manager shouldn't expect one if anyone should write a thank you note it's the manager thanking the candidate for taking the time to interview <laughs> okay so <laughs> so here's a situation okay for any job opening not for any job opening. For most job openings, there are dozens and often hundreds of applicants, okay? You are trying to get a job you don't have. By virtue of interviewing, you are trying to secure that job offer, right? I, I assume that's why anyone would want yeah. to interview. Yeah. So your goal should be to present yourself in the best possible light if you want that job. Now, if you don't want that job, why? I don't know why you're there. So let's assume, like I said, you want that job and you're competing against one, a hundred, 200, a thousand people for that job. You should put your best foot forward. You should give your best effort. You should show up early. You should dress appropriately. And you, you should you know, do all the things that you're supposed to do. Do you have to write a thank you note? Nope. Should you? Well, what do you think? I mean, if if it, do, do you want to stand out from the crowd? Do you want to elevate uh, their perception of you? If no, don't write a thank you note. Yeah. Go go on, right? Roll the dice. Maybe you're that good. And if you are that good, fine, right? The world will know it. But if you want to increase your chance of success, which I recommend everyone do, even if they don't think they need it, write a thank you note because that will help you. Again, this is not about th this advice. It gets misconstrued because it's like, it, it's trying to say, yeah, the candidate should be appreciated. Listen, of course the, ca the candidate's going to be appreciated. The, the, the interview is as much an opportunity for the candidate to decide whether they're, um, you know, whether they want the job, right? That's on the, the employer and the interviewers. Um, that's their uh, responsibility to present. Um, but they have something you want. Yeah. That's, that that's right. is how that's, that's <laughs> where the balance in the relationship starts. Right. Yeah. 
What do you think about that? Have you heard this? I don't know if I, I've mentioned I, it to you or not yet. I have not. And I laugh because I'm like, I think you, I think you, you move some words around, but no, 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 you meant it. it. It's, it's, it's the, it's the interviewer writing a pink letter to the candidate, which I just don't understand. Oh, did I get, wait, why. what did I say? What did I say differently? No, 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 no. You, you, you said it right. You said okay. it's just, I, I was trying to process it. Right. Okay. Cause I'm like, no, normally, normally the interviewee writes the uh, thank you letter. But what you're saying is people are saying the interviewer should write a thank you letter to the candidate yeah. that's coming in. Right. When I, when I saw this on, on, uh, that's LinkedIn, it, uh -huh. it, it, I saw it last. It had like well over twenty thousand likes and and, and shares, and 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 I'm and I'm looking at it going, oh, yeah, no, so no, that is the so it's, it's the assumption, awful advice. It's horrible advice. So is the is the assumption that if you as as the interviewer, if you don't write a thank you note, that you don't appreciate the candidate for taking the time out. I mean, I don't get it because the whole point of an interviewee or candidate to write a thank you note, like, come on, let, let's be honest here, Pete, is to stand out from the crowd. You said it. You you are competing for a position that other people are competing for. Your job is to A, showcase your skills and why your skills are a great fit for the organization, and B, stand out from the crowd, make it easier for the interviewer to make a selection. But to say no, I'm, I'm looking at it from the other point of view now, Pete. So could you imagine if um if uh, I was made a job offer and I don't accept the job offer? And when the recruiter calls me to ask me why I didn't accept it, because, well, I don't know, I didn't get a thank you note from the uh, <laughs> from right. the uh, interviewer. Right. That's ridiculous. That's, that would that um has probably never happened in, in the history. <laughs> it probably never ever. happened and never will. It's it's horrible advice again. And you said it got 20,000 likes and um, views. It, yeah, it was crazy. And, and that's insane. And, that's and, insane. and so I'll, I'll say something else without saying more. Okay. That okay. when you see advice, consider the source. Yep. I'll just say that. Right. I mean, that's that's what's weird for me. I mean, on TikTok, I'm looking at career advice being given and and you know, being a, a you know, being in recruiting forever, I have a habit of looking at someone's history. So when I see mm -hmm. someone giving advice, I look at their LinkedIn profile, I see who is this person to stand on their perch and and <laughs> and, and pontificate, right? And depending on what they've accomplished, you know, I'll, I'll say, yep, this is someone you should listen to. Yeah. Right. Should should I listen to um, you know advice from Warren Buffett when it comes to investing? Yes, I should. Should I listen to advice on um, investing from uh, Sam uh, Bankman Fried? No, I should not. Right. <laughs> um, so that that is, you know, look at what someone's accomplished and what they've done, and in. Not all the time, but a lot of the time, I, I scratch my head and say, I, "What? From what basis is this person qualified to to say this?" Mm. And and so just just consider the the source on that. So let me ask Ricky. Here's how I see it, because mm -hmm. we, we we wanted to explore this. I wanted to explore this from the other perspective. I want to understand. Okay, so I am. I think we've established this already. I am not a boomer. Do not call me. You, my kids like to say that. <laughs> At times, I'm not. I'm solidly mm -hmm. Gen X. We've we've yeah. we've well established that. We have. But this sounds old school, and um, that where that's my. I feel like, what am I missing? I I feel disconnected from from mm -hmm. this because I can't comprehend that, and I see it as it as this in sense of entitlement. Uh, from a candidate going into an interview, like I, I deserve, I deserve thanks. I, that was the rest of the message, like for for taking their time. Like I'm supposed to thank you for taking your time. Okay, yeah, I mean it's it, yes. Do, should they be courteous? Should they say thank you for coming? Should they mean absolutely. it? Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. But you want a cookie as a result <laughs> of it? To, to quote Chris Rock, like. Uh, no, the no, world doesn't owe you anything, right? It's like ridiculous. the world. Okay, here I'm gonna look in the camera. Yeah. The world owes you nothing. <laughs> there you go. There, that's it. That's all I have. That's that's what my father taught me, and it's what I remember all the time, right? And it's I'm sorry, not Pete. I'm dying laughing because if there's a some kind of a of a world event 
world event where all records are erased and you know the world is starting over there's a huge war and 2000 years later people are digging up computers the one thing they find is a video of usain looking into the camera saying the world owes you nothing and boom there you go civilization starts again with a whole new mantra <laughs> Man, have you seen have you seen the Netflix, uh, the new Netflix show about that? Like the this guy's name is Graham Hancock. We don't have time to talk about that today, but check it out. He's that okay. is basically what uh, he is showing. I heard of heard him on Joe Rogan um, months ago, and he is basically saying there was sort of an ice age kind of event, and that we were much more civilized and went back, and now we're going again. So may, maybe maybe Rick, maybe that already exists. Maybe someone's gonna, <laughs> going to dig that up. But the world <laughs> owes you nothing. From, well, uh, you know what? That, so that's a perfect way to kind of bring everything full circle. The world owes you nothing, folks, but you need to be able to tout your own skills. You need to be able, if you want those positions, those those exclusive positions, those hard to read, hard to reach positions and reach your goals, you got to put yourself out there and present yourself in a good light. And exactly how you said, Pete, just because a post got 20,000 views, it doesn't necessarily mean it's right. You brought up that uh, that a freed guy from FTX. That's a perfect example. Because a lot of people uh, lended their name, famous people, to that organization. Uh, and anybody would think, well, it's, it's Tom Brady, Actually, that may co contradict it. It seems like he does owe the world a little bit back. <laughs> well, he does. Yeah, he, right yeah, he owes the world a lot of money. But just, you know, you really have to take a step back, consider the source, and trust your gut. Trust your gut. At the end of the day, being a decent human being, being courteous will be the victor. So what? So That's what's, what's the? So when that advice is given, I think it's pandering. I don't think anyone. I want to believe is how I should say it. No one actually believes that. But I fear that they actually do. That that that, that when saying. You don't need to give notice or you should quiet quit and do the minimum. Like they mean it. That's a scary thing. I like, I, it'd be easy to chalk it up and say, okay, this is just a way to get likes. Right. Like, mm. you know, you, you could, it's like going on and saying, Hey, like uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm trying to think like go, go and do a, you know, a, a Red Sox game and, and saying Yankees suck. Right. Like everyone around you is going to be happy with, with that statement. I mean, that's what I would do. Cause right. I'm a Yankee fan. It, 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 but, but <laughs> Okay, so are are is it pandering to the crowd? In which case, shame on the people giving that advice. Or is it um, is they do they really mean it? And if so, what is the thought? Like, what's the perspective? I just said that I think it's just just sort of this weird sense of entitlement, um, and there's a whole lot of reasons you know, behind that, mm -hmm. like how that's you know, become a thing. Yeah. Um, I don't, what else could it, could it be? I, like, is there any I, justification for, for that sort of behavior? I think, I think it's, again, there's no rhyme or reason behind what I'm about to say other than what I feel. I feel that people just jump on those bandwagons just to be on board of something woke. It is to buck the system, to be, to, to, to be different. And then when people pile on to that, it gives it energy. The problem with that is, is that eventually somewhere along their career, someone's going to coach that person or better yet, that person might be involved in a situation when they experience the opposite. Right. And they're like, wow, I was wrong. The problem with that is 10, 15 years down the road, when people realize I had a different mentality, that previous mentality is, digi is digitally preserved. People will find that, oh, well, you said this 15 years ago and that 15. That's so we got to be careful when you put stuff out there, what kind of advice you attach your name to. It's got to be solid one because that advice will be attached to your name for years to come. Somebody could take look at. We're talking about this right now, and you saw this on LinkedIn. It right. was to say that's not going to happen 20 years from now when that person has a different thought process. So, people, you got to be careful with that advice. But at the end, decency is what's going to rule. And that's what people are going to remember. Let me say this. Going back real quick, Pete, to the uh, two-week thing. I've been in HR for 20 years. I remember each and every person, each and every person that left in a bad way because mm. that's the kind of impression they leave, Right. They, they, they leave in a bag. And if I see them somewhere else, oh, I remember that person. That person clogged all the toilets in the male's restroom on the second floor before they left. <laughs> Intentionally. Uh, true, true story, by the way. <laughs> yeah, that's it just because 
look, that's such a good point that you're, your people, whether you're in the office setting or out and like, who wants to be thought of in a bad light? I, I just don't right. like, just think a little longer term than that. Now, I, I don't want to put you on the spot and, and this is a different topic, but you mentioned the word woke and mm -hmm. I have to confess, I really don't know what it means. I, I know sort of the, the context in which it's used. I remember the first time that I saw it, it, it was quite a few years ago. I'm like, who is like, that is a weird, like slang, like bad grammar sort of thing, right? Which is somehow just something we do a lot now. Um, but I don't really understand what it means. Like, is there a simple definition or, or should we just move on and talk about that another day? No, it'll be simple. It'll be simple. Here's here's what woke where the term woke came from. Um, I guess back in the day, I don't know when that would be where, where that line is. Um, there was, I guess, an aura out there in corporate America that people were sheep, that they kept following what the leader said and they were sheep. The boss says, let's do this. We're, you know, and, and we do it and that's it, whether it's on personal life, whether it's the media, politics, whatever the case may be, when somebody or an idea comes in and bucks that system, whether it's right, wrong or indifferent, they're no longer a sleepy sheep, they're awake, they're woke, they have mm. this woke mentality, but obviously we use that as a, uh, as a funny term because we don't, we're not serious when I say somebody's woke. It's almost like making fun of them. Like, wow, you're 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 so woke. You need to take off your tinfoil hat. <laughs> right? It depends where they go with it. Uh, so to me, that's what woke means when somebody's trying to buck the system, but it just doesn't really make sense. It makes more sense that they're trying to get attention than actually trying to fix whatever issue they're trying to fight against. Okay. I hope it, I don't it, know if that makes sense or not. Yeah, I don't know that. I, I don't. I I, I would have. Thought of it a little bit in a different light, you know. It, it's sort of like a um, just more about you know society and 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 how um, you know like just changes. And I guess similar to what you said, right? Changes that need to be made. I, I didn't associate it with a corporate uh, or you know, well. I just use right? that as an example. As yeah, an example. Yeah. But, okay. but people right. use it for everything: life, you know, politics, life. You know, it, it's a what's the big example? It's a oh no, yeah, we don't have time to go on because this, this will be a five hour show. Then all right, well, we'll. Exp Maybe we'll explore that later. I don't know that right. I want to explore that, but maybe maybe, <laughs> maybe we will, right? Because I just, okay. I don't. I, I, we need I've, to go ask young without... kids that question. Huh? We need to ask young kids. You and I should go to like uh, to a different, you know, like malls and just start asking people what's your definition of woke. You know that guy on TikTok that goes around asking people about their apartments in New York City. No. Same thing here. No. Oh, you never seen that? So, no. Or people asking how much they make, hey, how do you make your money? We should do the same as just asking young people at the mall, what's the definition of woke to you? Yeah, that, that's eight hour show. That would okay. Maybe we will. That maybe we will. Except no one's at the mall. So <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> ask ourselves. <laughs> um yeah. okay. So I think I there's there's some more, but I I, I did we did we establish that there's a basis for for other than just it's, it's trendy to do. It, it seems Ooh. because look, one, one of the reasons that we talk about some of the things that we do, one of the reasons why um, I wanted to start Zengig.com, our, our career advice site, is to counter some of the really bad um, advice that's out there. Mm -hmm. And because I think it's just so necessary and, and being on the um, on the staffing side, we we have this perspective in the middle of we know what employers want, we know what works, we know what how hiring decisions are made, uh, what um, what makes an employee valuable or not, uh, what matters when references are checked. Okay, so mm -hmm. references are checked often. We check them always, and we want the truth from those references. So right. just just put put that aside. So. The was Zen gig. It's really to hey, let, let's let's give the advice that, that the employees need because if we know what the employers are looking for and we know what what works on that side, well, then we're pretty well positioned to now share some a lot of that um, with with the employees. So I feel compelled to counter this, but I have I you know, to to the, this bad advice, but I mm -hmm. have to understand where it's coming from, and I yeah. don't yet. So. Is it as simple? Is it does it say, well, this is just sort of this woke mentality? I don't want to keep using that word, but that's what you said. I mean, there's, there's what like what is is there more? Like what what is it? And then we'll 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 move on. 
people it, it's i really think that people want to be part of something viral it's it's it has to be that pete it has to be that because all these things I see people piling on. I'm wondering if the things people are piling on, I'm meaning agreeing. Yeah, I agree this, this, and that. I wonder if they would have that same kind of thought process if that same conversation was happening live in front of each other. You know, there's something that happens when you have a keyboard in front of you that kind of, for some reason, for some people, makes you put on this weird persona that you have to buck the system and you have to pile on. So I guess I guess what I'm saying with that, I think that comes from more of people trying to become a something viral than anything else. But I got to tell you, it, it's it's if you follow that advice as a candidate looking for a job, looking to market yourself, you really are are going to shoot yourself in the foot. And then pay attention to you know to websites like Zangig.com because you do have to consider the source. You do have to it, it, again at the end of the day, be a decent human being. People will remember you in a good light. So is it at the end of the day? Yeah. It, it the best I've come up with so far is that it's it seems to be anti-establishment, right? Like that that's like that's yes. the common yeah. theme, maybe the, that all these things have. So don't give notice because the employer would doesn't care about you, right? The establishment doesn't care about you. Don't um, you know qu you, quiet quitting? You know, you. Yeah, they they steal your time and they underpay you and and they don't value you right all things that just I, yeah look that's like leave again <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> but but anti-establishment and yeah. so was that kind of it too I mean because I feel like maybe it's sort of in may in you know, younger generations right when when yeah you know, when there were um you know hippies you know or well, i don't even know if that's the right thing but in like hippies. the 60s right <laughs> those were the young people doing yeah. do you know, yeah. doing that stuff and it's not like there's a lot of 60 year olds out um you know talking about this and so maybe is it is it just a natural um thing for young mm -hmm. people generationally perhaps to sort of fight the establishment whatever the establishment is at that point in time i mean i guess what that's how i've thought of you know woke and and even though i said i don't really understand it i mean that's been if i had to i don't think i've ever tried to explain it out loud i mean i see the word constantly but is that what it really is is like this is a a younger generation seeing things that they don't like about how for lack of a better way to put it the older generation people before them have, have, have yeah. built things and established things and this is their way of of fighting back is that i mean that's sort of how it feels to me I mean, that's what it sounds like to me, Pete, because, you know, social media has given young kids an unrealistic expectation of what it means to be successful. I mean, they think that success just as long as you put some stuff out there and again, you're viral and woke that the heavens will open up and all these all this money is going to come. Down. Yeah, maybe for a few and I do mean a few select people out there, but to everybody else bucking the system and and again, you're seeing the same thing, right? Because it, it's the anti-establishment asleep, uh, waking up from it like the Matrix, being mm. unplugged from the Matrix, right? Mm -hmm. And and okay. now some people want to take that blue pill. Some people want to take that red pill. And if you don't know that reference, I'm sorry. I just gave away the premise of the Matrix. It's been 30 years almost. Watch the movie. Oh, <laughs> yeah. man. You know I what got, I'm I got to say it. it. I love the movie. I yeah. love the premise. I think it might be true, but um, yeah. the, the, but are you woke there, Pete? My, my, my no, well, I, I, no. We'll talk about we'll talk about our simulated life later. But uh, um, the the, uh, the the that movie is like I tried to watch it with my boys, and they're like, "What? What is this? Like this is really? This, yeah, it's I mean, it's a great movie. It's, it's old." Um, but the. Uh, this is helpful. This is so. This has given me a, a a new way to think about it because I think it is perhaps as simple as um, young people are often frustrated. Um, they feel that they deserve more than now. That that's that's mm -hmm. I think the where the entitled part comes from, right? And and I have lots of examples of, of that, but we've because of social media, because of changes in parenting and, and so uh -huh. many changes in society that they, they are entitled. And so yeah. this is a way of, of, of acting out, but there's gotta be a balance there, right? Yeah. Like you're not, 
unless you're Taylor Swift or Drake or the the you know the 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 you know, the drop dead gorgeous model that that you know even even those I mean how many how many you know um, you know people who are attractive enough to be a model actually get to be the top of the uh, the, the <laughs> food true. chain right or yeah. how many great singers if you see you know, American Idol there are there's so much talent out there but there's only one Taylor Swift right I mean yeah. and so don't count on that and so you you want to buck the system. <clears throat> But you're in the system, like you, it, like unless you can break away from the system, you have to acknowledge that it exists and figure out a way to thrive within it. And that's the part that I think is that I, the message I want to share with Zengig, right? Like, yeah. don't don't find your great path by being overly disruptive with nothing to show for it. Like you haven't. You, you, you know, you have to, you have to earn and achieve, like, that's what society rewards, right? So what can you do? What, what have you achieved? That will give you credibility. And therefore that gives you a sense of control. But until then, like, you're just going to make it more difficult for yourself. Like, I guess that's, <laughs> yeah. that's it. Like you can yeah, yeah, go burn the place down. Fine. But there are consequences to doing that. Come so here. this has been this is like I, I have really been struggling to kind of wrap my brain around this. And I think I finally have it. I think it is just as simple as like it's a it's 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 a natural thing for a younger generation to fight against the older generation um and to want change and to be part of that change. But I'll go back to what I said. Choose your heroes wisely. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yep. yep like yep. Bur burning things down is not usually how you improve things for yourself or 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 those who you think you're fighting for, right? Like it, you know, find a better way. Not 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 just destroy a, a, a whatever exists today. So that's it's it's a little off topic, but this this really resonates. I think it, that it, it's more of just an establ, uh, um, you know, fighting the establishment. No, actually, Which makes I sense. I get it. Okay, I get it. I, I get where it's coming a from. Way so to bad. It. Yeah, so dumb it, to do, but I get it. Well, you know, Pete, if you remember now, you know, it, it's so so. What you just said in the past five minutes, I'm like, wow, wait a minute. You're right, because that reminds me of me. Look, growing up when I was in my teens teens i thought i had the world in my hands and i thought that my parents did not know the road i'm currently walking on right and obviously that's not the case right but i thought i had this sense of entitlement so i learned that later on in life i'm like exactly like you said the world doesn't owe me anything i have to go out and make my own way and exactly how you said pete if you're going to go out and make your own way burn the house down make sure it's for a reason make sure you've got something to show for it Make sure whatever you disrupt, it does help. It 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 is a tangible product that you're putting out there that people will will appreciate you for. It, right? That's it, it. And I think that's yeah. probably the the way to look at it, right. If you're going yeah. to to take that road that is is destructive and some you know for yourself for for others, just just do it with the see a, a better outcome at the end of it right like no like do that don't do it for the sake of like getting someone back or revenge yeah. or or you know, vengeance like this is what they deserve no no that's not like not gonna happen. oh god there's a quote from uh oh god i feel like it's 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 um it, it, it's from pirates of the of the caribbean about you know vengeance you know doesn't pay well or something like is that is there right? rum that one huh? Uh, I, I, I'll have to go over like that. <laughs> that just just do it with with a with a better outcome in mind, right? And yeah. and and then decide hmm, what what's 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 going to be you know, the five year outcome of this, or even mm -hmm. a year. So it might help you today, but is it going to help me over time? And and whatever change I'm looking to impart, is this leading to it really, <laughs> or or does it just make me feel better in the moment? And I think that's that's something to to build on look at us changing lives no seriously look at us changing lives because to me at the beginning of this of this episode i wasn't really thinking about 
my own experience growing up in my career. Right. So you're right, PD. I think it'll be awesome to take a look at this advice you're seeing right now and kind of track them. I know that's a, it's a lot. Track them in the next 10, 15 years and see how that advice changes as they experience life differently. Mm. Yeah. So I that, mean, yeah. Interesting. We'll, we'll, we will see. All right. So I think we've uh, I think we've arrived at a good point. I think Ricky, we did. Thank you as always. If you've listened you, this sir. far, thank you. We love um, <laughs> you know, your feedback. So so give it to us, um, you know, wh whenever you can. And um, thank you for listening. This has been great. It has. All right, folks, have a good one. Zengig.com. Check it out. You find all kinds of resources there. Good advice to help you in your career. Questions at Zengig.com. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much. Have a good one.